Okay, this is an assessment tool that you can use, especially if we're looking at the peripheral nerve entrapment and we're looking at assessment for the lateral flexors coming down here that attach on to the first and second rib. So it's a really broad, basic um, uh, assessment that I do. And I obviously have our clients in front of a mirror here. And what you can do, very, very simple, make sure that your clients are in a level position. Just pop your fingers over the top of their trapezius just pull down on the, obviously the front, the anterior border, pull that back towards you and then sink down on the first bony prominence there and that will be your first rib. Now, if you're dealing with a peripheral nerve entrapment sometimes and you know that the lateral flexors are involved, there's a fair chance that, that first rib will be a little bit higher than the one on the other side. So it's a, look, it's a quite a crude test, but it really does give us an indication whether or not that first rib might be a bit higher. And that obviously, when we talk about peripheral nerve entrapments, we're talking about the brachial plexus coming through that thoracic outlet almost area. Okay, so that obviously mimics in with you know all the other peripheral nerve entrapments so not only do we tend to deal a little bit with sometimes thoracic outlet syndromes which then relates further on down the track and predisposes to some of these peripheral nerve entrapments so whether it be here at the pec minor or it's in the tricep or obviously it's in and around the front of the elbow um, or god forbid in the forearm itself and then obviously down into the wrist itself with carpal tunnel okay so when we're looking at you know assessing it's really important that we are looking and making sure that, that first rib may be potentially a little bit more superior or high. If that is the case, then we know we're dealing with, you know, one of these issues in and around the, the thoracic outlet. And, and that as far as we're concerned, we will be doing the exact same sort of scenario and assessment in regards to, once again, the pec minor, which you can do just with a really simple test like the rights test, where you're just bringing the arm up and whether or not they actually get any paint, pins and needles or paresthesia just from having that, where basically, you know, we've got the brachial plexus coming down underneath the pec minor, and that can sometimes reproduce some of their symptoms. So first rib test, you know, and the rights um, arm abduction test are two really go-tos when we're looking at these you know peripheral nerve entrapments and also your neurodynamic tests.